Yo koso owashitare and welcome back to another one of these videos where we explain the classical Japanese in video games. Specifically, we are looking at the mythic tale number 6 from the Ghost of Tsushima, the Six Blades of Kojiro. So we're going to go into the language, explain it. Um, if you aren't aware of what exactly this is, please see the previous videos. There's a lot that we cover in those. I know they're a little bit long, but they are mainly educational. But let's waste no more time and just get right into the actual video, okay? Okay. So here we go with Mythic Tale number six, the Six Blades of Kojiro. Okay, so great opening because if you are familiar with the Tales videos that I've been doing that are my primary video that I make, we begin here the same way I begin with those videos and the way the Konjaku Monogatari Shu begins all its stories. Ima wa mukashi. So, ima means now. Then this second character, wa, is a subject marker. It means that we are referring, everything in this sentence is going to be referring back to this. And what are we referring to? The now, the present. So, in reference to the present, mukashi is this third one. And mukashi means a long time ago, many years ago. Not necessarily ancient, but many, many years ago. Something that's not immediately present or, or immediately in the past. It was uh, farther in the past, not quite ancient, but not exactly close. So, ima wa mukashi means, basically it means a long time ago or, or many years ago, but I like to translate ima wa mukashi because it's such a stock phrase in classical Japanese and classical Japanese stories and folktales. I like to translate it as once upon a time. And that's actually not a bad translation. It does pan out roughly with the same meaning. Anyway, and then we have Kojiro. These next three kanji here are Kojiro, which is the name of the guy, which well, which is the guy's name, Kojiro. So it's just his name. And then we have the verb Naru. These two characters right here, Naru. Naru is a copula, okay? Now, what is a copula? Copula is a part of speech, a word that gives attributes to something. So in English, our copulas are is, am, are, were, was, um, those kinds of things. A lot of times you can think of it as to be. And so in this instance, we have the classical Japanese verb nadi, which is the ending form. So the ending form or the base form, I guess you could say, the typical form that you see this verb in is nadi. However, in Japanese, we have what's called an attributive form because if you have that verb nadi, which means to be, but you want to use it not at the end of a sentence, not to end a sentence, to finish one, but to describe a noun that comes after it, you have to put it in this nadu form, okay? So kojiro naru, so naru means is or to be, I guess in this instance, is kojiro. And then we have these next two kanji here, ronin, which this first ron means prison and the second well, this first do means prison, and the second nin here means person. Now, there's some interesting ways of writing this. If you guys have heard the term ronin before, it is technically a Chinese loanword, but a ronin means a masterless samurai, a samurai who no longer has a lord that he or she, he or she, usually a he, and there may have been some female samurai, well, we won't get into it. But anyway, a masterless samurai. So somebody... A samurai that does not have a lord to serve, which is actually a problem because usually if you have wandering samurai, samurai, masterless samurai, they're basically jobless. And because they're jobless, they either, they usually end up getting into trouble. So a donin in ancient times was not a good thing. You wanted fighting, powerful, uh, uh, testosterone-fueled men to be... Of, I guess, beholden to somebody else, to beholden to somebody who actually has a stake in making sure that society runs smoothly, else you get a bunch of Ronin who will band together and they will go and attack and raid and pillage and, and, and become bandits, essentially. But so we have Kojiro Naru, so that, this Naru means that is, so Kojiro that is Ronin, which is a, you know, a masterless samurai. So a masterless, and in Japanese a lot of times we have it helps to switch the sentences backwards when translating them into English. So the ronin that is kojiro. So kojiro the ronin. And then we have this particle no, this next 
this next character here, no, which is a particle. And this particle is specifically, in this instance, it's being used as a subject marker. So it's saying that this guy, this Ron, Kojiro the Ronin, is the one who is going to be doing the action that comes afterwards, who's going to be, for whom the, the verb is applicable that comes afterwards. And the verb that comes after is ari keri, okay? Now this first, first part of this verb, ari, Adi is the classical Japanese verb to exist, or it's it's kind of like a copula, but not quite. It just means is or exists as. And we add this keri on the end of it, however, because adding the keri on it makes it a past tense, but also it adds a little bit of a poetic ah factor about it. It adds a little bit of a poetic intrigue to it, I guess you could say. So to translate this first sentence, once upon a time, there was, because we have the, the is, and then we have the keri, makes it were, but it makes it an ah. Uh, there was, there was poetic emphasis. So, once upon a time, there was Kojiro, Kojiro the Ronin. There was Kojiro the Ronin. Uh, okay, let's continue. Itaku kyouakunaru saga nareba, otoutu domo kore wo ayamen Okay, first word here, itaku. So itaku is a keyoshi, what is that? Adjective, right? So it is a word that describes either a noun or a verb. In this case, if it was itashi, that would be used to describe a noun, which is an adjective. However, instead of itashi, we have itaku. And the reason why we have itaku is because this kind of turns it into a connective form. I guess, I guess that does work. Sorry. So one of the interesting things, I'm, and I'm just going to put this disclaimer out of the whole thing. One of the interesting things about these instances of classical Japanese is these were written specifically with the idea of samurai in mind, I guess you could say. They're, they're, they're focusing so much on samurai culture when most classical Japanese didn't actually happen, or the, the most important works of, of classical Japanese didn't happen when the samurai were in power, but rather when the aristocrats were in power in the Heian period. And because of the influence of the warriors when they did come to power, some things about the classical Japanese changed. And I think they're trying to reflect that in these stories because Ghost of Tsushima is very heavily influenced by modern notions of samurai culture, which is fine, don't get me wrong, it's, it's great. However, that does mean that some of these instances are actually a little bit anachronistic. And in this case, I think this might be a little anachronistic. It sounds right to me, but my knowledge suggests that it should be itaki instead of itaku. But itaku means like extremely, very, superly, I guess you could say. So superly, super, <laughs> extremely, and then we have a Chinese loan word, kyo aku. Kyo means bad or destructive or unfortunate, and aku means evil. <laughs> so this is just a really bad way of saying evil. So extremely evil. Now, technically, this kyo aku is a noun. Right? Technically, it's a noun. Even though it's a Chinese loan word, it's a noun. So we stick this nadu on it again, this copula, that then gives the attribute, because it's in the attributive form, so it gives the attribute to the noun that follows it, which is the sa in this instance. In modern Japanese, you would see this and probably pronounce it sho or se. And what this sho or se means is something akin to natural disposition, um, personality, something like that. So, itaku kyo aku naru sa. So, the extremely bad temperament, extremely bad nature. So, he was angry, he was extremely bad tempered. And then we have this nareba, which again comes from the nari, which is then conjugated to nare. So, then we can put the ba on there. And the reason why instead of being nari or naru, we have it nareba, is because when you conjugate it like this, this nareba, that turns it into a conditional it makes it conditional but it makes it conditional as a direct cause and effect so an easier way to translate it would be either because or when in this instance i think because is the most appropriate way to translate it so because he was the naru you know narika is is or was because he was uh or because his temper was extremely awful 
because his disposition was very, very bad. Ototo domo. So ototo means younger brothers. And in this case, the younger brother is not a literal younger brother. It's simply referring to the other donin with which he consorted with and which, with which he was actually probably a senior amongst them. He was more aged, more experienced, probably a little more powerful. So ototo means younger brother, but in this instance, it's a little bit more metaphorical. And then domo means together. But in this instance, the way it's used is it denotes kind of like a plurality. So it's not just one younger brother of his that had a problem with it, or it's not just one younger brother that we're talking about. It's multiple younger brothers, okay? It's all of them. So otoko mo ototo domo. And then normally in modern Japanese, we would have a particle in between here, a wa or a ga, something like that, to denote that this is the subject of the following clause, the following little thought, I guess you could say. Ototo domo. However, we don't have that because it's classical Japanese and we oftentimes just leave those off. And then kore. Kore, kore means this, okay? This thing. So, uh, when if we were talking about, uh, if I was talking to a friend in modern Japanese, right? And they would say, give me that pen, right? Sono pen o chodai. Sono pen o chodai. Sono pen o watashite kudasai, right? Is what they would say. And maybe I have like three or four different pens at my disposal, right? And so he says, give me, give me that pen. And I'd say, which one? Kore? You know, this? And he'd be like, oh, yeah. Or he'd say, no, not that one. Sore. That one. Are. And then I would pick up this another one. Oh, kore. Kore ka. Is this what you're talking about? This one. And he might say yes or no. But anyways, that's what kore means is this. Now, the kore is referencing kojiro, this, this terribly bad-tempered donin. So kore o. And then we have the O particle, which again is a very important particle in both classical and modern Japanese, which denotes the object of a sentence, meaning the part of the sentence that is going to have the action done to it. Okay? So he is going, so ototo domo are the ones who are doing. And then kore, which is reference to kojiro, is one who's going to be receiving whatever the action, the following action is going to be. And we know that because the O denotes that. Okay? And then we have this verb, ayamen tosu. All right, so ayamen comes from the classical Japanese ayamu, modern Japanese ayameru. And this kanji, another way of reading it could be korosu or koroshi or something like korose, which means to kill or to slay, okay? Now, we have an ayamu, and then we conjugate it to ayame, so then we can add this m on the end, which the m originally comes from mu, but the, the u slowly faded off over time. But ayamem, this conjugation denotes volition or intention so they are trying to do it is their intention to do this now oftentimes if you see this conjugation it means that they haven't quite done whatever it is they want to do but they they want to do this thing it is their intention to do this this almost also acts as like a future tense in many cases though in this instance it, it doesn't per behave that way but so ayamem and then to normally I, I like running into this to a little bit earlier in the explanation so i can explain it but this to is a quotation marker, okay? It means that, like, if you read a thing or you speak a thing or you think a thing, um, but that's what it marks. It marks, like, again, it's it's a quotation. So, kore wo ayamem to su. And then this su, this ending su right here, is just the ending form of the classical Japanese verb, which means to do. In modern Japanese, we use the term sudu, okay? But in classical Japanese, if it was at the end of a sentence, it was just su. So, ayamen to su. So, intention, tr intention to kill, and then quotation means that that's what they were thinking or saying or doing. And then su expresses that they were actually doing it, okay? Which means that they attempted to kill him or they thought to slay him. They thought to put him down. So, e to go back to the beginning... So, because he had, because he was, because his temperament was extremely bad, his disciples, his younger, not siblings, but his followers and his uh, 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 juniors sought to slay him, sought to take care of him, take care of him, right? Moving on. Okay, this one's easy. So, akebo means like dawn. Or, or as the sun is coming up at morning. And then yori means from. 
is a is a particle that means from, and then you be, which is these two you this this one right here that looks kind of uh, like a how would you say how do you say it looks 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 like looks like it's got a big head, um you and then this next one be you be means like evening or at dusk fall so don so from don you be made and then mean made means until so from dawn to dusk from dawn until dusk okay <clears throat> amata these first three characters amata means many gr a great number now however in order to connect it to whatever comes next we do have to have this no which the best way to describe this no is an of like our english of but when you have an English phrase like, uh, um, ooh, let's do Zelda reference, Song of Time, okay? Song of Time is how we would say it in English. But in Japanese, song is uta and time is toki. Now, in again, in English, we would say Song of Time. But if you were to say it in Japanese, you would say toki time no of uta, song, okay? So we say Song of Time, they say Time of Song. So in this instance, amata no ronin. So that's ronin again, you know, the masterless samurai. So many of masterless samurai. So masterless samurai of many, which means many masterless samurai. Amata no ronin. And then again, normally in modern Japanese, after ronin, we would have a wa or a ga, something that marks the uh, 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 subject of the sentence, the, the thing with which we are speaking about. Amata no ronin. Kojiro to. Now here's a to again. But this toll is different from the previous toll. The previous toll we saw was a quotation marker. This one is basically an and. It denotes that you have X and furthermore in addition to that. Or actually, no, 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 no. That's wrong. That's wrong. It means with, together with, okay? Um, so, kojiro to with kojiro arasoe domo. So, araso, classic, classical and modern Japanese, araso. Um... However, we conjugate it from araso, we bring it to araso e, so then we can add this domo ending on the end of it. And this domo conjugation, araso e domo, means that even though, despite, uh, even, well, even though is basically the best way that I can translate it. So, even though many ronin fought, and oh, araso means to fight, to argue with, to battle, to fight. So, even though many ronin fought with kojiro. Kotogotoku. Kotogotoku is just, I'm just going to say it's a fancy way of classical Japanese of saying all, all of them, completely, completely or all. So it just means, that, well, it means all of them. Kotogotoku yaburenu. So from the classical Japanese, yaburu. In modern Japanese, yabureru. However, from yaburu, we bring it to yabure. So then we can add this ending nu on the end of it. Now, this ending new in classical Japanese, right? Don't confuse this with modern Japanese, because in modern Japanese, this new would be construed to be a negative, a negation. It means not uh, yabure, yabureru, <laughs> which yabureru means to be defeated or to be broken. So, to be defeated, to be broken. Um, however, this new denotes completion. Um, it kind of functions as a past tense, but it's not quite a true past tense. It just means that a thing happened, and it happened completely. So, kotogotoku, they all, yaburenu, were defeated completely. Like, just boom. It was defeated and done. There's nothing that comes after that. Well, nothing that comes after it. It's just boom. It's done. Almost like a continuation thing. Like, it happened, and that's how it is. It's over. It's done. So... Many ronin fought, so despite many ronin, even though many ronin fought against, fought with Kojiro, they were completely, they were all soundly defeated. Okay, inochi karagara. So inochi means life. Well, it just means life, like one's life, my life. And not life in the sense that I live it, but my, my living essence is the fact that I'm alive, you know. Spare my life, that kind of life. So inochi karagara. So, inochi, karagara means, oh, shoot, I, I looked this up, what does it mean? It means barely, um, just scraping by. So, inochi karagara, so barely surviving, barely alive. Inochi karagara, sono means that. 
However, the no connects it specifically to a specific thing. So like we had, we had kore, right? Is this, this, this. But when you have kore, which its counterpart for that is sore. So that, that, that. But if you want to actually connect it to a specific verb, you have to take it from sore to so no. And then you can add a noun after it. And in this case, the noun is ba, so place. So sono ba, that place, kara means from. It's kind of like yori, however, it's a little bit different. And they're using it in the modern Japanese sense here, where in classical Japanese, it did have a bit of a different meaning. But we'll just say that it means from at this point. So to translate this is, inochi kara gara, so barely alive. Sono ba kara, so from that place, barely alive. And then we're going to continue the sentence. Okay. So if you remember, barely alive from that place, no gareshi. So comes from the classical Japanese, no garu, modern Japanese, no gareru, which means to escape, to run away. Okay. However, we conjugate it to no gare instead of no garu, which is the ending form. We have it no gare. So we can add this shi on the end of it, which if you've seen the previous videos, we'll talk about this at length. The shi, it's Ending form, its original form is ki, which means past tense is the best way to think about it. So past tense, however, because it is then followed by a noun, we have to use it to describe this noun is what we're doing. So we're putting it in that attributive form because we are giving an attribute to whatever comes next. Okay, We are attributing to the thing that follows the whole sentence that came before. So inochi kara gara, uh, what is it? Sonoba kara. So, inochi kara gara, sonoba kara. So, barely alive from that place. Nogare shi. Again, nogareru. Nogaru means to escape. So, and then past tense, escaped. So, and that's then used to describe this mono, which means person, a person who did a thing. So, those who barely escaped with their lives. And then wa, meaning that those who barely escaped with their lives are the ones we are talking about for this sentence. So they, those guys, Kojiro O, again, so Kojiro is the guy's name, and then O means that Kojiro is going to be receiving the action. So the doers of the action are those who barely escaped with their lives, and the ones who are going to be receiving the action of the verb is Kojiro. O, and then Osorete, comes from classical Japanese, Osoru, modern Japanese, Osoreru, uh, which means to fear. And then instead of osoru, we have an osore, then we add this te on there because the te is a connective form. It means that we are, it's kind of like an and in this instance. You know how in English, if we say, if we have a really big long sentence and an idea that we want to discuss, we talk about, well, so yesterday I went to the store and I bought a bunch of ice cream or something like that. Or, um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking I want to go to a Japanese Shinto shrine and take many pictures. So this te is kind of that, that and. It means that we're we're not done with the sentence, but we're kind of done with this thought, but we want to connect this thought to the thought that comes after. So, osorete, feared, and futatabi means a second time, once more, futatabi, idomazaru. So we have the root verb idomu, which means to challenge, to fight against, to take up the challenge. However, instead of idomu, we have a idoma zu, would be the negative form. So not, and then for some reason they have it in the zaru form, which again I mentioned this in the previous video, in that the it, to my understanding it should be idoma zu, which means to not challenge, to not challenge. The negative form of challenge, the negative form of idomu is idoma zu. However, we have it in the idoma zaru, which means that it's in the attributive form. So technically, there should be some kind of a noun that comes after this that we're using to describe, that we're using this previous clause to attribute, to describe, but there isn't. And I'm curious as to why they chose to do that, because grammatically speaking, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, unless, of course, they are trying to evoke a period of Japanese history where that change had actually taken place, which was closer to the Edo period, the Warring States period, which is the most famous period of Japanese history. Funnily enough, that didn't happen until centuries after the events of the Mongol invasion. So 
and maybe the change was happening around there. Uh, unfortunately, my history isn't the best, but I wouldn't mind. Again, I'm not saying it's wrong because I'm no credentialed expert, but to my understanding, it should be Idomazu instead of Idomazaru. But if somebody from Sucker Punch ever watches this, I would love you to explain that to me. Why? Why did you do it that way? Anyway, so to go over the sentence. So again, those who barely escaped that place with their lives feared Kojiro and did not challenge him a second time. Okay, so this first word, Ashura, these first three Ashura. Now, I wanted to say it's a Chinese loan word because they did technically get this word from China, but China didn't come up with this word. China got it from the ancient Indian people, from the people who spoke Sanskrit. And Asura is a Buddhist venge it's a Buddhist god in a sense. They're usually gods of of power, but they're usually not nice. They're almost like demonic in a sense. Um, I don't know as they're necessarily outright evil, but they're very, very powerful beings, and they're very, very angry and bloodthirsty, and they love fighting and destruction. So they're they're not good news, but it is originally a Sanskrit word. I believe it's just Ashura or Ashura. I don't remember how you say it. Asura, maybe. Um, I'm not an expert in Sanskrit. I know a little bit because of my studying of Japanese, but it's a it's an Indian loan word that went to China and then from China to Japan. But it's an ancient uh, it's a, it's an angry Buddhist demonic god, right? So Ashura wa meaning then this wa denotes that the Ashura is what we're talking about. Koreo, so there we have the Koreo again. So Kore this o meaning that it's receiving. So the Ashura is doing the action. Kore, which is referring to Kojiro means this, this man, uh, is receiving the action, which is ki ni irite. So this ki, this one is a little bit hard to describe. If you've ever watched Dragon Ball, the ki that they use to do their uh, uh, energy blast and stuff, this is that same ki. But it means spirit, disposition, um, temperament, I guess you could say. It's an ethereal, non-material kind of air it's the atmosphere about a person right but so ki ni and then this ni means to or at is the best way i can describe it it denotes place or sometimes direction and then we have the verb irite so which from the comes from the classical japanese iru and then in modern japanese ireru which means to put in now ki ni iru is a stock phrase that means, literally it means to put one's disposition, to put one's mind into something, to put one's, or to put it into one's mind, which the best way to describe this is in, in modern Japanese, the way, or no, the best way to translate this in English is to become interested in, or to grow fond of, to be, to grow a liking for. And then, however, we don't have kini iru, which would be the ending form. We have kini iri, and then we had that te on there, which again means the and, which I pointed out before. So, the Ashura, the demon god, became interested and, and grew to like Kojiro, this man. And, yoroi ni, so yoroi means armor. And then there's that ni again, it means to or at. So, at, on his armor, in his armor, uh, ki ni, and then iki means breath. Okay, and then we have the o, so the breath is receiving the action that comes next, and the action that comes next is fuki kakeru. So from the Japanese verb, both in classical and modern, fuku, which means to blow, to breathe out on. And then we have instead of fuku, we have it into fuki. So then we can add this kakeru, which means to hang up on, to stick on to, or or to to put over. So. And again, what should it be? Yeah, fuki kakeru. That should be fine. So the this Ashura, the Ashura became interested in, and fond of Kojiro and breathed upon his armor, let out a breath on his armor. Because it's an Ashura, obviously it's magical. It's like, ooh, he's giving him a spell or cursing him or something like that. Okay. And then Sua, as far as I can tell, I looked this up because I'd never seen this before. Sua is just kind of like a... Ah, oh, it's a it's an exclamatory thing. It's almost not even really a, a, a word. It's like, whoa, 
So the, the Ashura breathed upon his armor and wouldn't you know? Something kind of like that. Tachimachi. Tachimachi means like instantly or suddenly, abruptly. And then we have the Tachimachi ni, which this ni in this instance, it it's kind of a similar ni to the previous one. It means at or on, sort of. But what this ni essentially does is it takes nouns and non-verb words and turns them into an adjective or an adverb. It, it then takes it and makes it an attributive. It makes it so it, it gives an attribute to whatever comes next. So tachimachi ni, so suddenly is the best way to, to, to translate uh, tachimachi ni. And then tsurugi is a sword. And then furute comes from the classical Japanese furu-u. And then what is the modern Japanese furu Eru, furu eru, I think is what it is, which means to swing, to swing about. Now, again, in classical Japanese, it should be furu ite. However, over time from classical Japanese, if you had furu ite, it became the, the e eventually faded out of uh, use. And then instead of the e, they just had a little glottal, 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 glottal stop. So furu te. And that's a modern Japanese con conjugation. But again, you can see it's it's really interesting to see the, the evolution of Japanese, the language, over the centuries. So, furuhite is what they would have said classically, but now they just say furute. And because they're still hearkening back, not quite to the Heian period, not quite to classical antiquity for Japan, but for the age when the samurai, when the warriors were in charge, which was the in-between that classical antiquity and now. So, tachimachi ni tsurugi furute, so swinging his sword, so suddenly swinging his sword around, yamu, from, well, classical Japanese yamu, modern Japanese yameru, which means to stop, and then koto. Now, this koto means a thing, but the way it functions in this sentence is it takes the previous verb that comes before it and turns it into a noun, so the thing of stopping, so yamu koto. So the thing of stopping. So tsurugi furute, so swinging his sword around, and the thing of stopping, nashi. And this nashi means doesn't exist, is not there. So it's a form of negation in a sense. So this whole sentence is, and suddenly he began to swing his sword without ever stopping. I believe in the English translation, they they specifically talk about how his sword arm never tired. And that's the same kind of idea is that he then gained a certain, after this Ashura showed him favor and gave him Ashura demonic powers, he was able to fight tirelessly and viciously, like almost like a demon. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Okay, so hito, this first one, hito, is a person, and no is of. This is the an of no. And then mi means body, or a, not quite appearance, but but flesh, the body. The, the I don't know any other words to describe it. So the person of body. But again, in modern, ja or in Japanese, we have to flip that around. So a body of a human, the body of a person. And then nagara means something to the effect of while while so in conjunction with or and in this instance it's almost more of a despite it's a however despite having so despite the body of a human and again we technically one of the things you could do is you could have a copula here or something or or say that he has so uh hito no mi ari nagara so having but it's classical Japanese, so we don't actually need to say it if we don't, or we're not going to say it if we don't need to. So, hito no minagara, so despite having a body, or despite being a, the body of a man, kojiro wa, so kojiro is the guy, and he's the one who's doing this thing, kojiro wa, tsurugi, sword, no, and there's that no again, oni, oni means demon, or monster. So, tsurugi no oni, sword of demon, however, we flip it around again. Demon of sword. So a demon of the sword. So and then oni yeah, tsurugi no oni eto. How's I gonna how am I gonna translate this? This one's hard. Uh actually I'm not gonna translate it because this one's rough. A, you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to trust me on this. That it means 
to, toward. Um, and then we have nari, which means to be. Although in this instance, there's kind of an implied, a bit of like a future tense, in that the best way to translate this instead of be, it's become. And then we have nari, so we can add this hatsuru, which modern comes from classical Japanese hatsu, modern Japanese hateru, which means to go to the very end, to do completely or to finish out. So translating this whole thing, so despite having the body of a man, Kojiro became completely or completely became a demon of the sword, a sword demon. So like an inhuman, like super powerful, super strong. Okay. So, uh, crap, I forget how to actually pronounce these guys' name. But these are the faction, these are the Ronin faction in the game. You know, they're the bad guys who, spoiler alert for Ghost of Tsushima in case you haven't played it. Um, they are the guys who, you know, they're residents of Tsushima, but they eventually betray the people of Tsushima and start working with the invading Mongols. And I believe it's Sugagasashu, Sugagas, Sugagasashu, Sugagasashu, something like that. Um, but basically, Sugagasa means a straw hat. So it's the straw hat brigade, the straw hat group. And that's what the shoe means. The shoe means group, and then suga means straw, and kasa means, well, it means umbrella, but if you notice, their hats are really big because they're like umbrellas. They're supposed to keep the rain off of you like an, a, a handheld umbrella. But these ones, they just wore on their heads. So these are the, um, the straw hat brigade, the straw hat collection, the straw hat guys. And then ga, meaning that they're the ones who are going to be doing the uh, the action. And the action that follows is naitsu, which is a Chinese loan word, which means inside and then go through. Which, it's uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but naitsu basically means to betray. To send out information from inside. So they worked inside the good guy's place. They worked inside Tsushima and then went out to give information to the Mongols who were invading. And then we have this shi, which comes from the verb su, which we already saw, which means to do. However, we have it instead of su, which would be the ending form, which would mean that the sentence is over. We have it in shi, which allows for the sentence to continue. And then we have moko, which is another Chinese loan word, which means the Mongols. So Moko ga, and then the the Mongols are going to be doing this next the the action of this next little part because the action of this first part the suga 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 gasa shu do this this first part this first clause and now the Mongols are going to be doing whatever happens in the second clause, which is teista teista how do you say teista tonari taruni okay I might be talking out of my butt here but teista te means hand. And shita means underneath. So if you are under someone's hand, means they are controlling you. They are the ones in charge of you. Te shita to nari taru ni. Uh. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back it up. Okay. So what this means is moko ga. So this ga, strike that, because it's not it's not denoting that the, the Mongols are going to be doing the action that comes next. This is actually referencing possession. So it's kind of like the no that we've seen up to this point. So, moko ga teshita. So, teshita means subordinate because you're under the hand. You're under the hand. You're not over the hand. You're, you're under somebody else's hand. So, teshita means subordinate. So, Mongols of subordinate. Again, flip it. The subordinate of the Mongols. To, and there's that quotational means that they, they, they do whatever action that comes next. Nari taruni. So, naru, there's that nari again, which again means to be or to become. And then, nari taru. And then this taru is kind of a past tense, but it's kind of a uh, continuation. So they became thus, and then that state continued. However, the normally you would end the sentence in nari tari, but we don't have it in di because we have it in ru, which is the attributive form, which means that normally we're supposed to have a noun. And technically, we do. However, it's implied, and because it's implied, because it's so obvious what the noun that comes after it is that they just don't say it. And the noun that should come after it should be toki, which means time. But when you put it in a sentence, the way you use it in a sentence often means that it functions more as like a when. And then usually you have to add the ni, so which notes at that time. However, we just take the toki out. 
So, the, another way you could say this is, Moko ga teshita to naritaru toki ni. But we don't have the toki, which means the time. So, at the time, we just take out the toki and we just say naritaru ni. So, to bring this back, we have the Straw Hat Brigade uh, betrayed, you know, they betrayed, and then they became, or when, so, back it up. So, when the Straw Hat Brigade betrayed the people of Tsushima, and became the subordinates of the Mongols. Okay, Kano means that. Okay, that. Um, because, well, we've been referring to Kojiro as Kore because we've been talking about it, the situation from his perspective largely. Now we're talking about him from the perspective of the other Ronin. The, the, uh, Sugagasa Shu. So, and because we're we're talking about them, from their perspective, it's not a this man, it's a that man. So, Kano Kojiro, so that Kojiro, o, meaning that he's going to be receiving the action, and the doers of the action are the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Ronin, the other Straw Hat Brigade Ronin. O, and then Mukae comes from classical Japanese, Mukau, Mukafu is one way, another way you could say it, which means to go out to meet. Or to, to, well, to go out to meet. And more broadly, more metaphorically, in this instance, it means to greet and accept into. And then we have mukai ire, which, again, there's that iru, which means to put into. So they went out to greet and brought him in, brought him in. Mukai e ire. And in, from mukau, we have mukai e, so then we can then connect it to the ire, which means uh, to put in. And then we have it instead of ed or so yeah edu we have an ide so then we can so that denotes that the sentence is not done yet and then we have itsimi which is a chinese loan word and this one's a, a little hard to describe but itsi means one and then mi means ally so together so it's a single ally so they're working together but you have an ally so itsimi to naseri now there's that to again which means that they are going to be doing whatever it is is following or as and this in this case i like the as so as an ally to naseri comes from the classical the the root verb nasu which is very similar to naru but it means to make somebody into to make an action so each so as an ally to as an ally made so from nasu we have nase so we can add this d on there which is kind of like a past tense and continuation it's kind of like that taru that we just saw a little bit ago. So, they, they, the the uh, straw hat guys, accepted, went out to greet and accepted and brought in that Kojiro and made him as an ally. Okay. Okay, first word. Gonin, which is a Chinese own word that means five people. So there's five people. So Gonin no. And then we have another Seye, which is another Chinese loan word, which means like people who are super skilled at a thing, the experts at it, or or the best, the best of the best. So the five best people, I guess you could say, yeah, because the five best people, because the Gonin already implies people. So the five best people, Kuawarite, come from the Classical Japanese, kuwa water, modern Japanese is the same, kuwa water, which means to add to. And then instead of kuwa water, which is the ending form, we have kuwa wari, so we can add this te, which means that it's, again, it's the end. It means that there's, the clause is over, but we're going into another clause of the sentence. So kuwa wari te, so adding five of the best people, tomo ni, so together with each other, tomo ni, nerao, means to 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 aim at to target to go after tomoni narau wa and then in modern japanese this is a little bit weird because nerau should technically be describing a noun again there's another implied noun here because this is in the attributive form should be attributing a thing and the best thing that would go here would be hito tomoni nerau hito so the person which that's what hito means is person so tomoni nerau the so the person that they are going after together, 
wa, meaning that that's what we're talking about. So the person that we're going after, but again, person isn't in here because it's so obvious that it's just implied. And then tada hitori. So tada means only and hitori means one person. So to translate this into English, so Kojiro allied himself or, or added to himself five of the best swordsmen, five of the best of them, and it's implied obviously that they're swordsmen, five of the, the most expert of them, and together they target, the person they target is one person specifically. Kurodo nari. All right, Kurodo nari, which is interesting how it's written here because I would assume that it was a Chinese reading of Mei Jin. Mei means uh, underworld and Jin means person. So Mei Jin, or the way they pronounce it, Kurodo, is the term for ghost, the ghost of Tsushima, which is the main character in this story, who is the, the good guy, essentially. And then we have Nari which is, again, the ending form of the copula is. So the one for which they are aiming is, ending form, the ghost. Okay, so let's go back and do the whole thing. Okay, so we missed the email on Mukashi, which is, so once upon a time, uh, there was a man, by the, there was the Ronin Kojiro. There was the Ronin Kojiro. So, because he had a disposition, a very bad temper, very ill temper, very bad disposition, his juniors all sought to slay him. So, from dawn until dusk. Okay, so from dawn till dusk, although many other ronin fought with Kojiro, they were all soundly defeated. They were all defeated. Okay, so it's a little bit longer, but so those who barely escaped that place, the, the place where they fought Kojiro, with their lives... Feared, then feared Kojiro, and did not fight him a second time. So, and then, and Ashura became very pleased with Kojiro, and then breathed upon his armor. So, and whoa, wouldn't you know, suddenly... He was able to swing, he began swinging his sword without ever stopping. Meaning that he, he became so proficient that he could fight without tiring ever. So, despite having the body of a human, Kojiro had become, Kojiro had become a demon of the sword. So, and then when the Straw Hat Brigade, the Straw Hat Ronin, betrayed the people of Tsushima, doesn't say that, betrayed the people of Tsushima, and became the subordinates to the Mongols, they went out to greet, they went out to Kojiro and put him amongst their ranks, and treated him as an ally. So, and adding to themselves five experts, they, the one they target, they only target one person. And that person is the ghost of Tsushima. So hopefully you found that educational. Hopefully I was able to explain it in a way that both speakers of modern Japanese and to a degree those who cannot speak Japanese can actually understand it a little bit. And the reason why I do this is because classical Japanese has an archaic air of power and mystery and might to it. Doing something in classical Japanese adds almost like a religious effect to it. Like when they have... Um, characters who are godlike in anime and game speak, they usually do it in a classical or a quasi-classical way. And so I find this fascinating. 
Hopefully you found it interesting too and you were able to learn a thing or two. We have one more mythic tale after this and I would like to get all of these done after which I have some other instances of classical Japanese and games I want to go over which I find actually to be a little bit more interesting and there's some cultural things that I would like to explain along the way but this video is already long enough so Thank you very much for watching if you've made it all the way up to this, to the end here. Ito katejike no koso haberikere. And hopefully you were able to learn something and hopefully we will see you in the future for another one of these videos, the last of these mythic tales explanations, or also for my personal translations of a set of classical Japanese, ancient Japanese folk tales that I've been working on. So we'll see you later. Have a good one. Goodbye.